Hey there, welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. I'm your host DIY Pete out in Bozeman, Montana, and today I'm going to show you how to build a Lazy Susan with a wine barrel or a whiskey barrel style top. This is going to rotate real easily and you'll be able to hold all sorts of things like salt and pepper, napkins, and food dishes for your next meal. You can see that when you place it on a table and put whatever you want on it, it's going to spin around easily and work really well. Um, now, since you can't just find whiskey barrels and wine barrels at any old store, I wanted to make it simple for you to find the supplies. So we're just gonna build this out of your normal one by fours and one by threes. We'll connect them, and then we're going to have our whiskey barrel style top. So let's go ahead and look at some of the tools and supplies you'll need for today's project. For tools, you're going to need to pick up or borrow a saw of some sort. So you'll want to use either a miter saw or a circular saw. You're also going to want a jigsaw, drill, sander, router, and a Craig jig, wood clamps, a tape measure, safety glasses, hearing protection, some screws, wood glue, stain, sealer, and of course your lumber. We'll start by cutting all of our boards down to size. We're going to cut them all to the same length and there's going to be a combination of one by threes and one by fours. Next, we'll lay out our boards. Today, we used oak because this is what real whiskey and wine barrels are typically made of. You could also use pine, though. It's going to be quite a bit cheaper. We'll start by laying our one by four board with the nicest side down because that's going to be the top. Then we're going to put one by threes up next on each side. And then the remaining one by fours till the edge. These are all 24 inches long. Hold the boards in place with a clamp and then use a scrap piece of wood about 14 inches or so long and drill a hole to use as a pivot point. Then measure out 10 and a half inches from the pivot point, put a mark and then drill a 3 8 inch hole. Attach the scrap wood to the center board as a pivot and then use a pencil through the new hole to create the circle. Number the boards and use arrows to help you remember the order and orientation of each board. Once we've finished drawing the template, the next step will be to attach our boards to each other. Today we're going to use a pocket hole jig to do that, and this is called a Craig jig. We'll use this in combination with a few screws and some glue. Another method to connect the boards would be to use a biscuit joiner and some biscuits. Both methods will work great. The next step is to set the jig for the thickness of the wood. Today we're using three quarter inch thick wood. So we'll first set the bit to three quarters of an inch and we'll tighten the stop collar. Next, we'll make sure that this is at the three quarters of an inch setting as well. You can move this up and down and it is at the three quarters of an inch setting now. Put your jig into your drill and then we'll start with the outside board. We'll go ahead, place it into the Craig jig, like so, and drill our first pocket hole. Drill about three pocket holes on each of the boards and space them evenly for each board. We're going to work from the outside of the circle in on each side, so you're not going to need to drill any pocket holes in the center board. Then go ahead and clean your table so that you'll have a smooth work surface. Lay out your boards again. Remember that we numbered them so that you'll know exactly where they go. Then start attaching the boards to each other using glue and screws. Make sure to work on a flat surface and also make sure that the boards you're using are as flat as possible and not warped. Take your time on this process and if you do have a set of clamps or an extra person that could help out, that will come in very handy. Once the boards are all attached, you can remove any excess glue using a clean rag. Clamp the wood down and then drill a starter hole for the jigsaw. Begin following the pencil line to cut out the circle. Take your time and stay near the line as best as possible. Reposition the clamps as needed and continue cutting until the entire circle is complete. Use an orbital sander to remove any rough edges from the sides, the top, and the bottom. 
of your piece. We'll create the look of a real wine or whiskey barrel top by using a chamfer bit on a router. Route both the top edges and the bottom edges of the barrel. Take your time and move around the entire circle. You can use multiple passes if needed, and I'd recommend practicing setting the correct depth on a scrap piece of wood that is the same thickness. Then use a sander with 220 grit sandpaper to smooth the surfaces and to remove any burn marks you may have on the edges from the router. Next, create a smaller circle out of half inch plywood or just some scrap plywood. This is going to serve as a base of the Lazy Susan to make it sturdy. Create a pivot point jig just like we did before and I'd recommend making a circle with a diameter of about 16 inches. In the actual video here, I made it a bit smaller and realized that it was too tippy so I ended up remaking it to that 16 inches. Attach the Lazy Susan by drilling pilot holes and then using half inch wood screws. You can pick up a Lazy Susan at the Home Depot for about $5. Connect the base using a strong glue or a clear epoxy. You could use screws if you prefer, but I just found it a little easier to use the glue. Remember, this video is showing the smaller base that I ended up replacing with a larger diameter base after the video to make it a little bit more sturdy, so your base is going to be larger. And once the base is centered and in place, put something heavy on it while the glue dries. Once the glue is all dry on the Lazy Susan, we can apply our finish. First, I'm going to do a wood conditioner so that the stain doesn't go on blotchy, and then we'll go ahead and apply a stain. Apply the wood conditioner using a clean rag and apply it to all the surfaces, the top and bottom. Let it dry, and then once it's dry, you can apply your wood stain. I used a dark walnut colored stain from Minwax and just one thin coat of it. Now if you want to personalize your whiskey barrel Lazy Susan, feel free to do so. I like to use a wood burner for this. They're like eight bucks, so they're super cheap to pick up. Maybe you'd put your last name. You might draw a design or put the year. I'm just gonna put the year just to make it simple right now. I like to first draw it with a pencil and then go over it with the wood burner. So I'll show you that up close. You can use either a stencil or just freehand like I did with a pencil and once you're all done follow that with a wood burning tool. You'll want to make sure that the stain is completely dry before you do this or do it prior to staining. Adding something was kind of an afterthought and so normally I would do it before staining. Lastly seal your project to protect it and then add some rubber pads to the bottom. All right, thanks so much for tuning in to DIY Projects with Pete. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and that you're inspired to build your own Lazy Susan with a whiskey barrel style top. For the complete tutorial and all sorts of other projects, head over to Ryobi Nation. And as always, for the latest updates from my site, head over to DIYPete.com. Please connect on Facebook, subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and best of luck with all of your upcoming DIY projects. Cheers from Montana. Don't forget to watch some of the other videos on my YouTube channel. Click on the left thumbnail to find out how to build an ice chest cooler for your patio and on the right thumbnail to learn how to build a patio bar. Lastly, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Cheers guys! Oh. oh, man. <laughs>